Hello, welcome to Quackalope, or should I say, welcome to Shelf or Cell, where we break down, at the moment, ten games. Five we're keeping. Five we're getting rid of. And one, one standout. That's eleven games. My math has never been the greatest skill that I've had, but we're going to be walking you through, basically, the combination of our collections. Now, I have a couple hundred games. I have a couple... Four or five games. And so to start with, before we start playing, you know, a dozen games a week together, this will be swinging heavily in my game collection's favor. A game collection that has rarely, if ever, seen the light called. of day. Well, be, been cold. Yeah. Been just... trimmed, be, been snipped. Been, nothing has ever been done to it. So we're, we're hedging it back. We actually have three Calyx shelves. Yes, we have one Calyx shelf that we are going to have as our permanent collection, and that's going to be on our main floor for display. We have it is the collection where we're going to start upgrading, playing, covering. Yeah. Games that are on this list, the five that we're keeping, are going onto that shelf. Then we have one shelf that is getting rid of, and they're going to be gifts that we give to people who come and visit us, or we bring to conventions to give out to you guys, or, or we liquidate just sell. for a brand new futon. Yes, exactly. And then one shelf is the one that is the transition shelf, the shelf of all the prototypes, and the shelf that publishers are sending us games to cover that is on our to-do list, and that's going to be the shelf that's just going places. Now, will we need more shelves? Yes. Possibly. That being said, we're starting with those three. And once we and they get... are five by five calyx, mind you. We're not just doing a two by two or a three by three. It's the regular five by five. And once we hit fifty games in our permanent collection, we'll do a big cacophony event where we basically go back through every game in our permanent collection, rank them, and let you know if we're still holding on to them. So follow Most of them along. We will, this is going to be a bit of a journey. So our mid game right now is a game that we actually just received. It's going to be Brian Burrow. Boru. Boru which is going to be High King of Ireland. This is going to be a game from Osprey Games, which I'm actually really compelled by, but I'm curious about you, the audience. Have you played this? Are you intrigued in it? Is there any coverage you'd like to see? It's one of those games that I'm excited about, but I don't know if there's an audience that's excited about it. Yeah, we got it kind of with a postcard that said, Hi from Ireland, and I'm interested. I, the artwork looks interesting, and... They cannot see that artwork. Oh, they can't see that? We no, don't have a top shot. we don't have a top shot, awkward. and it doesn't help when you awkwardly pause. Oh, I was... Clap, clap. No, Wait. we're just going to keep going. What? Normally we'd cut this out, but there's no safety here. This is all completely fresh and raw. We're going to be playing this and Keyflower over the next week or two and bringing you all a review coverage, some form of media, and then you might see them back on this table in, in a another Shelf or Cell segment. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button before we swing into this main thing. This is a segment you're going to want to tune into every single week as we slim, refine, and let you see the progress of and our And stumble collection. along awkwardly as I forget that we have top cams. Oh, and leave your guesses <laughs> down below about which games we're keeping or getting rid of as they come out, because this is all mixed and matched at the moment. Pipeline. This is a heavy, heavy Euro game that I have played a couple times, and... It is not for me. It is ranked in the top 100 on BGG. Which, which means we might have to give it one more play before it goes. Yes, because that is another series that we are working on. But it was just too technical and too mechanics driven and not enough player interaction and fun this, to be my side. It has a really, really interesting market and has a fascinating way of triggering your actions. You're building pipes that once you connect a point and hit the pre play button on it, everything starts activating. Yeah. Which is great. But it is. It's very heavy. It's very technical. And I think it's a little bit more of a solo heady puzzle than either of us enjoy. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably give it one more play, but it is on the cell shelf. Next one. This you have probably seen coverage on the there channel recently. There is no recently. debate around this one. <laughs> Basically because your title of one of the videos this week gave it away. This is staying in our collection. This is right now until the expansion comes out. For everyone, this is a two-player head-to-head skirmish yeah. arena battle game where you're competing with your components, sending in gladiators, and trying to win the most glory in the game. It is a deck builder. It is so much fun. And we just tried out the expansion this week, which makes me really excited because it adds a three-player, four-player, and a solo mode. Yeah, For Glory is probably one of, if not my favorite, gladiator-based game. Uh, I, I'm just in love with this. I want to play this this weekend. Can we, please? Maybe. Next, on my list, is going to be an unopened copy of Too Many Bones. This is going to be Undertow specifically, which is one of the standalone expansions for the core game. Comes with two characters, 
a more accessible way to enter into it and its own little narrative and story. I have all of Too Many Bones downstairs. I know it's currently on GameFound, raising a ton of money. I was gonna get rid of this. No, he's not allowed to get rid of this. I have played it recently, and I know I, I should have played it a long time ago, but I have dived into it, and I am charmed. I am charmed by the upgrading system, the mechanics, the dice, the monsters, the battles that you're fighting, the journey that you're going along to the big boss at the end. I like what it's doing and I want to see more of it. So why do I have Undertow here in front of me? I could have grabbed 40 Days in Daylore as well. It's because the narrative is the thing that I'm always missing when it comes to this game. The mechanics and dice building, immaculate. So we're going to dive into our own little mini adventure and mini campaign. We're gonna start here, then we're gonna swing into 40 Days in Daylore. I wanna see if I can bring back my love for too many bones because I think the thing I did is I did too much. You dived in too, too fast deeply and got overwhelmed and underwater. The mechanics were too heavy for me. Yes. The theme wasn't there enough and I just became frustrated with a system that I really should love. Yeah. So I'm excited. Okay. Next. This is Swords and Strongholds, a game of mouse strategy, which I'm actually really sad that I have to admit I'm going to get rid of. This is from a series called Mouse Guard. This is the game that they play in that comic series. It's reminiscent of Redwall and all these little forest creatures building a civilization together. It's just a little abstract puzzle. That's all. It's moving mice to set up keeps and castles on the edge of corners. We may give it we a quick swing. We might give it a swing because I like abstract puzzles. Here's the thing. While I got this game hoping that it would beat out some of my other abstracts, because I love the theme, I love the lore, I love yeah. Mouse Guard, it never makes it off the shelf. It just doesn't. And so I don't need it taking up space in my abstract market if I'm never playing it. Well, on so that note... we might give it a shot because she's never played it so she can get some experience with it. And then this one is probably going. Guys, take a guess. Are we keeping or selling? Just this one? Yeah, just this one. Okay. Keep or sell. Do they even know what this is? They should at this point being on your channel. This is Kingdom Death. Yeah, dun, we dun, have. Dun. Honestly, I just included this because it's a give me, right? Like we're going to have Kingdom Death here in the collection. And I brought up this uh, Giga Lion expansion because it's going to be the first way that we teach Alexander Sander Radcliffe how to play KDM. Be waiting for it. We are going to have a full Giga Lion gameplay with him as soon as we've practiced a little bit <laughs> so we can run it as smoothly as possible. Because as far as he's concerned, we've got one chance, one shot, one opportunity to show him how good KDM is. Okay? You wanna do one on your side? No, grab one. All right, Land versus Sea. This is one that we just picked up recently at Gen Con. Good Games Publishing! <laughs> and it is a gem. It is, we play it primarily as a two player head to head where you're just trying to enclose these areas of land or sea. There are a lot of other ways you can play we it. We played it as a three player as well and it was very charming. Yes, and you can play it at a four player on teams as well. And there's a lot more ways to score besides the primary game. It seems simplistic in the beginning and then it just be delves, it just explodes into One so much more. One of the best little abstract tile laying puzzle games I have yeah. played this year, if not ever. This is not leaving anytime soon. Definitely not, it is staying. Okay, swinging over to a game of civilization. This is gonna be Tapestry by Stonemaier Games. Have you played this? I have not played it. I hear it is like a solid core game I should give a shot. It is a economic puzzle. It's an efficiency management game like a lot of Stonemaier games are. And I gotta be honest, I really liked it when it first came out about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And it hasn't really hit the table much. I've played it at my friend's house a few times. I have a few people that still really enjoy it. But this is never something that I'm seeking to bring out. First off, it's a bit heady, a bit heavy. It's not overwhelmingly thematic. It promises Civ building without overwhelmingly delivering on it. And for me, I'd rather play other economic or efficiency puzzles, such as Scythe from the same company. So I like Tapestry, I really do, but as far as my personal collection goes, it's just not making it to the table. Kabuto Sumo, another game that we just picked up recently at Gen Con. We gave this a decent amount of tries. We have played it with yep. friends, we've played it by ourselves, and it is a little kind of dexterity puzzle where you are trying to knock each other's pieces off this main tree stump. You're little bug wrestlers inside a ring. 
And this is sadly going on the sell list. Yeah, now it's not going there because it's a bad game, but it's going there because I want it on a shelf where if someone comes over, we sit down, we play something accessible, which is what this is, I'm comfortable letting them walk home with yeah. it. It's not something that I'm going to go out and sell immediately. It'll probably be in our collection for another few months, but I don't think I need it any longer than that. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of grown beyond what it delivers, and I think it, what it does is exactly what you said. Yep. A great game for an intro, bring people together after a dinner, and just kind of have fun, and then say, hey, did you like this? Take it home and try it out with your friends yeah. and stuff. This is one that I'm moving on to the sell or the gift list, so that in my mind, it's not coming off of my personal shelf. Yep. It's just one of those that is free to walk home. Now this. This is one game that is actually from my personal collection. And this is one I arguably might disagree with her on. You can disagree all you want. I have very few games from my collection that we are actually keeping, selling, that we're actually talking about. You have very few games from your collection, I, yeah, period. period. Santorini is a beautiful, fun, abstract puzzle, two-player, head-to-head, asymmetric abilities. One of the first games we ever played together, we played, I, I don't know lost if you played. all of them. You lost. Yes. And this is such a fun, quick game that you can get up. I play it with Alex's kid, who actually beats me sometimes, so she'd probably cream you. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. You play... You can see over here, you can play as Zeus, as Artemis, as Apollo. You're playing as Greek gods and heroes and the legends, and you're trying to build these towers and cap them off with the blue dome on top. Whoever does that first wins. And it was also, I think this was the second game I asked for in my collection after Terraforming Mars, which was on last week's episode. Check that one out. And so, yeah, this one's not going anywhere. It is a absolute I think wonderful. I even have pin painted minis in here. I believe I do. Yes, ha, I have a painted minis. Who got you painted minis? Alex did. From his, it's from his warehouse, It is right? from his warehouse. I took off his sticker. But yeah, these minis are painted. He saw a painted mini copy come in and he's like, ooh, do you want it? So look at the personalization on these guys. There's also no top shot. There's also no top shot, I know, but. Oh, there's one set that's not painted. There's one set, I know. You'll have to paint them yourself. I will. Very nice. They're just so cute. Nice. Either way. So this is one that she's not going to let me get rid of. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would keep it if it was just my collection, but it really is a great little abstract head-to-head. -head. So I'm not upset that it's going to be part of our collection. And then finally... Lost Ruins of Arnak. Have you played this? I think I played it a really, really long time ago, and I have trouble remembering the exact way it works. Deck builder, worker placement, we compared it a lot to Dune Imperium and also Endless Winter. Uh, this one's good, it's very solid. I'm about five plays in, I played Jan's copy, that's why mine isn't open. But I just, I don't think it's sticking around. It's not one that I ever ask for. The theme is interesting and inviting, but not one that I keep going back to. The components are actually really nice, but it's sort of got that Euro space. It has that Euro vibe to it. And I don't usually ask for it as opposed to other economic or strategic euros. And when it comes to deck building worker placements, deck building is one of my favorite systems. Mm -hmm. So you're really going up a lot against a lot of other great games when, it, when you ask for a deck building system game. This one didn't beat out the other two. And so it slowly just slid down my wayside. It's one of those games that started off as a solid four plus, And now it's slowly drifted down to a low four, if not a high three. And there's just not a lot of reason for me to keep it. Deck building for you is like area control for me. I am very selective of what the I bar, keep. The bar is incredibly high when it comes this, to This, additionally, um, some of our friends have it. So that's why I'm not too upset to see it on the gift sell pile because I know I'm going get to get it to the table with other people at other places. So there you have it. An update on 10 new games plus one that we're working to cover. If you've played Brian Burrow... Right? I think so. If you've played by Brian Burrow Bo before, Boru, whichever one it is, let us know down below what type of coverage would you like to see. And along with that, in case you're curious, yes, my voice is Crap. gone. Yes. So if you're like, why does he sound so funny? Oh, it's not just He's just you. been screaming to the wind outside the house these days. Yeah, I just step outside and, you know, just to relieve the uh, stress built up yeah. from... The anxiety. Here, just, ah! Either way, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Whatever the case, whatever you do. Remember to do the important thing. I did not see. I was reaching for my own duck. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.